The scene was like something out of a high-tension crime drama from Hollywood. Police with guns drawn, black-suited SWAT team members, and stretchers being rushed inside the building. Images like this were just not supposed to happen in Edmond, Oklahoma, but it was all too real. And for those who escaped the mass murder inside the post office, what they had just seen and heard was something straight out of a nightmare. Got outside, tried to find out who was. They had about five of them laying over here. Some of your friends. Close friends. Part-time mail carrier Patrick Sherrill, who had been reprimanded by supervisors at the post office the day before, had walked into the building at 7 a.m. on August 20, 1986, with three handguns and started shooting. Sherrill was considered an expert marksman with a pistol and had military training. One of the first victims was one of the supervisors from the day before, and then indiscriminate killing. Police officer Steve Thompson of Edmond saw the carnage left behind in one corner of the post office. I'm gonna guess six or seven women were back there hiding, and, uh, and he just went back there and shot them all. They're all, you know, mothers and daughters, and it was just really sad. In all, Cheryl shot and killed 14 employees and wounded six others before turning the gun on himself. Now this is a paper from 30 years ago, right? Yes. I recently visited with Jerry Reed and Herb Retke. Both worked at the post office back in 1986. Both worked with and knew Patrick Sherrill. Jerry was inside the building that morning when he heard a pop. At first he thought someone had dropped something. Uh, cases that they hold letters in, sometimes people would drop them, so it would pop, pop, pop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at first you thought, you know, it's just those, but then we realized it wasn't. It was gunfire. Jerry and another employee got behind a desk, and after a few more gunshots, Jerry told his friend it was time to make a run for the door. So we took off and running down the aisle, and we had to turn to go out. And just as I got there, I just kind of glanced back, and Pat Sherrill was right there, just getting ready to, to uh, come down that aisle. If we had hesitated, 30 seconds or a minute, I wouldn't be here. As it turned out, Jerry saw the gunman as he was seeking out his last victims. And then Billy Miller, he was down, I got hookered under the case. Pat Sherrill shot him there. And then Lee Phillips, he was in the break room under a table. Pat Sherrill come in there and shot him and then went out in the middle and killed himself. All that happened as we ran out the door. Later that morning, after police released the survivors, the emotion of that deadly morning overtook Jerry. I came back and got in my car and, and just started driving. And I, I, I spent probably two or three hours out, arcade in, just drove around. I, had to, I just had to get away. I well, remember everything about all of them because we saw them all every day. Herb helped organize the 30-year remembrance of the victims this past weekend. That morning 30 years ago, he was not in the post office, but was on the phone with the supervisor when Cheryl apparently began his rampage, because suddenly... Clamor and the phone dropped and disconnected. Herb's mission now, keep the victims' memories alive. For 30 years, we've never forgot them. So many people in Edmond had a connection to the victims that day. Ironically, even Officer Thompson responding to the scene. There was a guy out in the parking lot uh, that had been shot, and I started to go towards him, and I was told by another officer that, that he'd already been checked and he was dead. But to find out uh, later, I was in his daughter's uh, wedding as a uh, this man. Questions arose over police procedure at that time because at first police thought they might have a hostage situation on their hands inside the post office. Do you think things would have been different at the post office had you guys Probably not. As we arrived, it was all, all done, but it would have been the it would have been the response that you would see today. That little old Patty here was a sweetheart. For survivors like Jerry, who remember the 14 friends they lost that morning, it's been faith that has helped ease the pain and the burden of what they saw and heard 30 years ago. You know, through it all, the Lord has been good to me and helped me to overcome it.